Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It is a very skeleton crew in here today. So, uh, well, I'll need you to be louder at home so I can hear you. So, uh, a Merry Christmas. We are on what? Uh, 10? Yes, day 10 of Christmas. So, your Christmas decorations better still be up. They still up? They still up? Good, good. Day 10 of Christmas. Uh, Christmas ends with the Feast of the Epiphany on January 6th, so the, the night before is the 12th night, so <sighs> I hope you have enjoyed your 12 days of Christmas, enjoyed this start of the new year. Uh, pastoral reminder that just because the calendar changed over to 2021 does not mean that everything will be changed. Um, as much as we like to blame a lot of things on the year 2020, uh, we also have to be mindful of our own abilities and gifts that we can do and bring into this new year to make it a good one as much as we can. So even if it is terrible, we can still make good happen. Okay. Uh, to celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany on Wednesday, it would be sort of traditional to have house blessings. You know, new year, blessing of the house, great idea. Although it's a little more difficult still with the pandemic, even though there are vaccines on the horizon and all. So I have put together little uh, baggies for people to take and have a house blessing at home on Epiphany or any time reasonably after, you know. The wiggle room, there's a lot of wiggle room on these blessings, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly a thumb that same day, but you know, close enough-ish. Jesus works on the close enough-ish principle on this one. Um, so it's just a simple little prayer and a blessing that you write with chalk that I have blessed, and you just write above your doorpost, your main door, you write this little blessing for the house and for all who dwell there and all who visit, all who pass by, and those who have no home. So if you want one, just stop into the office sometime this week, um, or if you need me to like set it outside for you to snag on your way after work or whatever, let me know, let me know. Um, but it's a wonderful way to bless the house and to bring some goodness to this year. Uh, reminder that we, it's January, so it's traditionally the, the month for annual meeting, that very important business meeting to take care of lots of things for the church. Yay! Um, and also to elect members of the vestry and delegates to diocesan convention, all those important things. So, of course, we're going to have to do it digitally this year. We're going to have to do it over Zoom, so please stay tuned for those kinds of details of how we will do that for this year. We might not like a, a big Zoom meeting, but it's also the best way to do all these important things. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It is good for us to be here. While Shauna lights the Advent wreath, I'll read our short lesson. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to, and the, to Son, the Son, and, and to, to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as, as it, it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. To us a child is born. Come, Come let us adore him. Alleluia. Together. 
Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Hallelujah! To us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah! Together in unison, let us say together this song for today, Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the words of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And to stand at the threshold of the house of my God, than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, Happy are they who put their trust in you. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nation. <clears throat> Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. Together, Canticle 16. 
Blessed are you, you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory, Glory to, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is a reading from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 6, and 15 through 19. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us. Who believe the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 21. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. Join in. Uh, to you, to you all, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, Sing, sing an endless praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and, and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, our King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father, when you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death, and open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. 
We believe that you will come to meet our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The third reading is a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. After the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarian. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The story of Jesus' birth from Matthew's Gospel does not lend itself much to Christmas pageants. Fewer angelic appearances, less conversation, no choirs of angels and shepherds lost in amazement at a crash. The Gospel of Luke gives us a lot more drama, a lot of dialogue and action to enact for our Christmas pageant. The only thing missing from Luke's Gospel are the Magi, the wise men. So, you know, we just kind of shoehorn them in there, you know. The Gospel of Matthew that we read today tells the story of Jesus' birth in a different way so that we pay attention and we really sit with its powerful drama even though it does not have the dialogue and action we might expect. Joseph and Mary are engaged, but Joseph discovers that Mary is pregnant. He is a righteous man, so he plans to break off the engagement quietly. He must deeply care about Mary, but then an angel appears to him in a dream. The angel tells him, no, this child may not be yours by blood, but do not be afraid to take this child as your own. Care for him, and name him Jesus, for he shall save the people. And Joseph does so. And Jesus is born in Bethlehem. Matthew gives us no details, no shepherds, no angels, no census. But soon afterward, wise men appear. They followed a star. They asked King Herod, a different King Herod than the one who killed John the Baptist later. Uh, and they, they asked King Herod where they could find this child, born to be king of the Jews. Herod gathers the scholars and clergy, gathers the information from the wise men, and then sends these wise men to find out this child. And then to come tell Herod where he is, that he may go and adore him. And we know that's not what he was planning. The wise men locate Jesus, they bring gifts, but they leave by a different route because they had been warned in a dream. And Joseph has another dream. Take this child and his mother, flee to Egypt. Herod is about to murder him. Joseph follows his dream, and the Holy Family become refugees in Egypt. Herod then goes off to murder all the young boys in Bethlehem. While there is no historical record of this happening, clearly Herod seemed like a person who would do such a thing. Herod then dies, and Joseph is told of this in dream as well. 
Because remember, there wouldn't be a news alert going out to all the world, breaking news, King Herod of, you know, of Israel dies, you know. So Joseph takes Jesus and Mary and returns to Israel, but along the way, at some point he has another dream. No, don't go back to where you were. Go to Galilee, a place called Nazareth. So Matthew's Gospel gives us just a handful of characters, very little dialogue, and a lot of dreams. Much harder to stage this as a pageant. But Matthew is asking a very big question. Who are the people that are paying attention to what God is doing? Who is paying attention? Joseph is paying attention to his dreams. He could have dismissed those dreams, but he listened to them. He cared enough to remember them when he woke up. An angel guides him four separate times in his dreams. Take this child as your own. Flee to Egypt. Return to Israel. Abide in Nazareth. Four different dreams that Joseph pays attention to. The wise men are paying attention to the stars. They didn't say, oh, look at that star. That looks really interesting. Something must be happening in Israel, that little province of the Roman Empire. We should pay attention to what happens in the news in the next couple of years. Those wise men cared enough. They were paying close enough attention that they said, no, we need to go ourselves and go there and see what's happening. So they follow the star and they bring gifts. And even the villainous Herod is paying attention. These wise men from afar brought him news that could have easily been dismissed as some weird fable from a bunch of exotic astrologers. But Herod knew something was happening. And he was going to do whatever it took to stand in God's way, even resorting to murder and massacre to do so. These people are paying attention to the small things, and these small things have such cosmic significance. A child was born in Bethlehem, and he is going to shake up the whole world. He is born to nobody of high significance or wealth, born in a small province of the Roman Empire, a province conquered many times over the centuries, right there. Joseph, Mary, the wise men, King Herod, a small cast of characters, and here they stand in for the whole world. Joseph, who stands in for those who will listen and act, those who listen to the word and who respond to the word, who are not afraid of doing what is right, but who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Joseph, who says not a single word in the Bible, speaks louder with his actions than many who speak today. Mary, who stands in for those who hold the word in their hearts and bodies, who must trust that others will do the right thing, that others will listen to God at work in their own lives, because we cannot go it alone. The wise men who stand in for all those who seek after truth and will pursue it, dedicating their lives to truth, not to a fad or fame, those who will let the truth take them where they should go. And Herod, Herod stands in for all those who cling to power and wealth instead of clinging to God, all those who trust in themselves, and who will hurt or destroy any of those who stand in their way. All those who build up treasuries and palaces for themselves, while those in need go hungry, who defraud workers and the people in order to have more and more and more. The world is saved by the faithfulness of us little folk, who are not big players on the world stage. Joseph and Mary were not big important people, and God chose them. The wise men brought gifts from afar to a child king born in a small province of the Roman Empire, out of the way. And these little gifts, I imagine, helped Joseph and Mary flee down to Egypt. And Egypt, 
We didn't even talk about them. Imagine the people in Egypt who would welcome these refugees, Joseph and Mary and Jesus, who would help Joseph find work and help Mary raise her child. It takes a village to raise a child, you know. These nameless Egyptians helped care for the Christ child. These little acts of righteousness matter. We do not know how much they might matter until years later, but perhaps only God knows how much they matter. Pay attention. Perhaps God has just one small thing to ask of you today. And wouldn't you want to be the one to do it? To feed a hungry person? To call a friend that's been on your mind? To write a note to someone? Or to share our worship with someone, to show them the spiritual nourishment you find in all saints. What if all God was asking you to do today was to share a link to our worship or to a message that you found meaningful? Pay attention. Watch. Listen. Listen for God. And trust that even the smallest thing done for the kingdom of God will do great good. Amen. Amen. Together the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have, have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may I remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
will take some quiet time to pray for the world and its needs, thinking of those far off and those who are near, everyone who needs prayer, and for our hearts to be with them. on our parish prayer list. Donna, Catherine, Cheryl, Aaron, Bill, Joe, Bill and Barbara, Mark and Kim, Pam, Carl and Annie, Molly, Amy, and Paul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together, the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.